It's the Division Three State Championship and a battle of unbeatens, the Sturgeon Bay Clippers against the Ashland Ore Dockers. I'm Vance Dow, joined by longtime head coach from Wisconsin Rapids, Ken Beagle. And uh, what a game this turns out to be. This could be a real track meet on a football field. We, sh we should see a lot of uh, uh, balls crossing the end zone. And uh, one of the things that I think is interesting about uh, the Sturgeon Bay program is they started with these kids four years ago as freshmen and uh, built the program. A, a lot of sophomores playing next year. And uh, here they are, uh, paid their dues for four years, and they're here. On the other hand, uh, uh, we've got uh, the Ordockers. Uh, they played uh, seven juniors last year, and they're back here. Now, you mentioned Sturgeon Bay. Of course, they come in. They have a host of stars, but perhaps the star in their galaxy is senior quarterback Chris Grison, and uh, he is the guy that really makes them go. Well, if, if we're going to have a, a football game that is going to be successful for uh, uh, the Ordockers, they're going to have to put pressure on him. They have to uh, rush him and force him to get out of his rhythm, and, and he's a fine quarterback. Colleges are looking uh, at him, Iowa's, uh, Iowa, Iowa State. And uh, so, uh, some Division twos are, are real serious about him. So he's a factor in the football game. On the other hand, a lot of speed on the Ordockers team. Now, you mentioned speed, and uh, they have a wealth of uh, deep running backs in their stable. And perhaps the best of the bunch could be Sean Watlin, who had a remarkable year, uh, over 1,350 yards, 50 yards rushing. Well, they, they like to run the option outside. And when, when they want to get around uh, the corner, they'll, they'll block the end. It'll be a different type of option. Get down on the downfield on the cornerback and make the pitch late. You'll see the ball sometimes pitch 10, 15, even 20 yards downfield. Okay, if you'd like to see a lot of points, we expect to have that and then some. And this, the Division Three Championship, a battle of unbeatens between Sturgeon Bay and Ashland. There you see the head coach for Sturgeon Bay on the sidelines. In his 14th year there is Gordy Saren, 18 on the total staff at Sturgeon Bay. And, of course, his counterpart for the Ashland Ore Dockers, Bob McLeod, in his fourth year as the Dockers head coach. Bob McLeod, 48 years old. Gordy Saren uh, really having a chance to come here on a, on a mission, as they might say. Well, both of them are excited. It's their first time here, and uh, it's a great uh, experience in your coaching career to be here. Uh, both are hard workers, and uh, before the game, they're uh, they both uptight and uh, smiling on the outside, but you're getting tore up on the inside. Ashland making their first playoff appearance since 1987. Sturgeon Bay first ever in the playoffs. And as we said, coming in, both 12 up, zero down, and we are set to kick it off. Sturgeon Bay to receive. Okay, let's get this thing going. Oh, they got a little crack out there. That's John Walker, and Walker just shy of the 40-yard line to about the 39-yard line. So nice they're going to have very good field position to start it out. Good return. Difference. Now we go to Division Three Sturgeon Bay. Now there, not a lot of running room from the get-go. Their attack is going to be one of uh, out of the I formation with uh, leading a. Of a fullback. Here's the upfront people for Sturgeon Bay. Juadas, Meyer, Peterson, Schley, and Bean up front. And in the backfield, Grison, Ellenbecker, Hoiska, Walker, Adams, and Bellin. We expect to hear a lot from Chris Bellin there. Top notch receiver. Second down and nine, 11 minutes and counting in the first quarter of the unbeatens, and we have our first flag. Looked like there been, might have been uh, some contact perhaps made uh, on the defensive line. I was saying before, Van, that uh, with the big offensive line of Sturgeon Bay, they want to get right in your face and attack you, lead a fullback or even another back in a power eye situation, and attack from, from end to end. Ashland defensively. Mayday, Moravchik, Arbuckle, Wilmer, and Sandor up front for the Ore Dockers. Linebackers and DBs, Lund, Burke Schneider. Lund, Jolma, Watlin, and Shemlock. Shemlock, of course, their quarterback, uh, because of a dislocated thumb, not expected to play on offense, but will play on defense. And they're going to unload, going deep, and it's going to be intercepted. intercepted. Woo. A nice juggle on the play, looking downfield. Great coverage. Wow. Well, a turnover in the Division 5 tilt set the table for the offense. And right now we have a turnover on the second play. Well, the Ordockers closed the gap. He was open early as the ball hung in the air a little bit. It was, uh, safety was able to come over and close it. it 
So with a break in the action, if you're enjoying this game, we'd like to hear from you. If you have any comments about Wisconsin public television sports coverage, give us a call at 1-800-253-1158. That's 1-800-253-1158. Was that interception by Jason Zach? Did you, did you know I was that? trying to get a number, and before I got a number, his teammates had mobbed him, I, so I don't know at this juncture. Now, he's a backup quarterback. He's in there for Schimler, who dislocated his thumb earlier uh, just a few weeks ago. So we'll have to see. Uh, I'm sure we'll get a replay of the interception uh, coming back from the timeout. But like you said, uh, Zach played the second half versus uh, Medford and Black River Falls. And, and how they got here, well, Sturgeon Bay started out by beating Campbellsport 44-12. Then they blanked Southern Door 34 zip. They beat Evansville Albany 28-14. Here is the replay. Bryson back to pass. Good had pass good blocking. time. Good pass blocking. And it was picked off by Jolma. Pat Jolma, the free safety. He gets the pick. Okay, Sets the go. table for Jason Zach and company. Out of the wishbone. Power offense. Right at you. Paul Tudor was the ball carrier. Here is the Ordocker offense. Made, Sandor, Davis, Bergschneider, Zach Lund, Tudor, Watland, Forster, and Jolma. Second down and nine to go for the Ore Dockers. This is the Division Three State Championship Contest. Ashland 12 and 0, Sturgeon Bay, same record. Seven kids going both ways for Ashland. Pitch back. Good running room. There you see it. Sean Watland, he could go the distance inside the 20, inside the 10. Touchdown! They got on the highway on the outside. We call that the highway. Make that pitch and away you go. 64-yard run by Sean Watland coming in. Just over 1,350 yards on the air. And you see his explosive breakaway speed waiting to the last second to get rid of the ball is Zach and Watland did the West. Great blocking by Sean Lund and Pat Joma. He put it on cruise control the last 20 Ooh. yards. Well, that's going to be an exciting football game. You can see that. That's why they, they, they picked up, uh, they ran for, for uh, an average of 357 yards per game rushing. That is the 13th season. touchdown of the year. The point after is good. Eric Lund on the point after, and just like that, the Ordockers take a 7-0 lead. You know, the Ordockers' plan was to really stuff the outside and make sure their corners came up quick. And I think it was a bit of a surprise for the for the uh, Clippers' uh, secondary because they seemed like they were hanging. They got, they got the pitch, and away they went. Shifting gears from football to hockey. Next weekend, Jeff Sauer's Badger hockey team faces off uh, against Rick Comley's Northern Michigan Wildcats in a matchup of the 90 and 91 NCAA champions. It's the Badgers' last home series of 1993. You won't want to miss a goal if you watch Wisconsin versus Northern Michigan next Friday and Saturday on this Wisconsin public television station. The interesting thing about that, uh, uh, when you've seen on this long run, that the, the backside line came down and made a lot of what we call victory blocks, where they, they got the, uh, you'll see the, the backside lineman now, when he makes his cutback, they're going to be there and they're going to pick him up. He'll make his cutback to the right here, and he'll run right through all kinds of people. That's what broke the long run. Well, that's a great start if you're Bob McLeod, not the way you want to get started off if you're Gordy Saren. I think the football might be in the air today. <laughs> well, we've oh, already I seen that on their second play. <laughs> they being Sturgeon Bay. Well, for the Ordockers, that's like a pass. Yeah. <laughs> Pitch it, that's like a pass. That's exactly right. It was just an underhanded pass, <laughs> that's, that's right. all. Pitch it back. Back to receive again. And it's picked up by John Walker. He's going to return his second kickoff, trying to get to the near sideline, and he has wrestled to the field by number 43, Eric Lund. Sophomore. Eric, that's the younger brother yes. of, uh, of Sean, and a great athlete. They have him highlighted as one of the best uh, uh, players on their team. Well, he kicked the point after two on the touchdown. Wears a lot of hats. And that's fun to have two kids that are brothers on the team. We haven't had a chance to set the referees for this tilt. 
They are Don Rouse from Menasha, Kevin Hurley from Appleton, Daryl Spiegelberg of Menasha, and Tom Wollerman also of Menasha. We said we expected a track meet. Well, we've seen one track star already and Sean Watland going 64 yards for a touchdown. We had a face mask here. They moved it up 15 yards, so it's better field position for the Clippers. Clippers forced to play catch up. Little play fake. And what a catch. That's Jim Adams who hung on to it. Looked like he almost was not going to be able to hang on, and he did. Well, that's good. Gordy, you know, we had one we intercepted. He comes right back with the pass, and it puts him right back in good field position. Good coverage, or I'm sorry, good protection for Bryson, the senior quarterback, who completes better than 55% of his passes. Good juggling act that time by Adams. They move the sticks in a hurry. From the end zone, the play fake. He waits for his man to free, unloads, over the defensive back, Sean Lund. They fake the outside pitch. They go inside to... It, it looks it looks to me like early in the ball game Ashland is is really concentrating on stuff in the run and, and they want Sturgeon Bay to pass the football. That was Corey Hunsader. Uh, they're in a three deep secondary with their with their monster right in the middle of the field and whenever there's a too tight offense he's he's mirroring what the fullback does and they want to stop the run before they worry about pass. Second and eight for the Clippers in Ashland territory. Back to pass, looking and finding. Oh, Once again, breaking several effort. tackles along the way is Chris Bellin. And we were told by Gordy Saren, he is hard to tackle, case he, in point, right he there. He just broke three tackles, ran right through those kids. Well, one team likes to throw, the other team likes to run. We've got two contrasting styles. Both of them have shown some success in terms of moving the chains. That was a wake-up call for the Clippers, wasn't it? They're just coming right down the field here. Good pass protection so far. Straight ahead, Hunt Sater. Hunt Sater inside the 25 down to, well, now they're going to spot it at the 25. He tried to stretch for an additional yard, and the referee would not want to buy it. Bringing in the play from the sideline for Sturgeon Bay is Tom Ellenbecker. Now, the way, uh, way the Ordockers are playing their defense, I think the flat is going to be open uh, throughout the day. Uh, they're in a three-deep secondary. The corners are running off, and they're really kind of giving Sturgeon Bay the flat. Second and six. Bryson set up a screen. screen to Bellin. Oh! Bellin fumbles, Ball. and it's recovered by the Ordockers. The ball was simply knocked out of his hands. I don't know that Bellin ever knew what hit the ball. And it's recovered by Lund. Super play, well designed, opportune time to call it. What a shame. Two big turnovers for the Ordockers. Boy, it's set up there. Who got it from behind? Might have been one of his up. Oh, sticking his head in there was number 43, Eric Lund. If one Lund doesn't get you, the other one will. <laughs> Eric jars the ball loose, and Sean picks it up for the fumble recovery. Big game for the young sophomore so far. And there's his brother. Boy, that's that's a Lund header, double header. Straight ahead they go. Now well, that can really deflate you there. It's Georgia Bay putting together a great drive and then one of those turnovers. And uh, they were trying to go in for what might have been the equalizing score. And now, instead of going in for six, they're back on defense. They have to keep telling the kids they haven't been stopped. They've stopped themselves. They haven't been stopped. they got to keep their spirits up, keep their emotion going, and come back and stay in the ballgame. Full house backfield. Big series for uh, the Clippers now. they got to put and together some field position. Was that a fumble? And it's recovered. Knocked oh. out of the quarterback's hand, making the recovery there for Sturgeon go. Bay, Corey Hunsader. Well, we've, we'll give it to you, and you can take it back, okay? We've got excitement here today. Zach, he got hung up right behind one of his own players. Hung him up. I think it was the, uh, it was Tudor. The middle guard came shooting through and kind of got in the way of the quarterback-fullback mesh on the 
on the dive, and that's what caused well, the problem. Like you said, Sturgeon Bay, they haven't stopped themselves. Or, I mean, <laughs> Ashland hasn't stopped them. They've only stopped themselves, and now they've got the ball right back uh, at the six-yard line. Power formation here. Looks like they're going to come to the right. There they go, and ridden down by number 43, Eric Lund. Now they do have attack away from the uh, power back side, but they really like to come to that power back side and make the defense shift. And when the defense shifts to that side, then they go back with the, their counter game, their trapping game for the week. Quinn Mann was the ball carrier. The problem the Ordockers have right here, uh, Van, is uh, they really can't depend on just the running game here. Straight ahead and not a lot of running room. Great That's quarterback Bryson. Eric Lund really laid a hit on him here. Eric Lund now, let's remind you, 6'1", 190 pounds sophomore, and he's playing like a big timer. So far, he's been big for the Ordockers. Quarterback sneak, and Lund led the charge for... Along with his brother, Sean. Third and one, third and goal from the one yard line for Sturgeon Bay. And it's a touchdown. Quinn Mann is the man who gets a six point plunge and the turnover has come back to haunt Ashland. Well, we knew it was going to be this kind of game. <laughs> All right. I like, you know, when you set the table, you're always fearful that it could be like a six, <laughs> six uh, three nail biter, but uh, this has lived up to its early expectations from what we've seen in the first uh, six these two, plus minutes. These two teams have too many good athletes on the offense, and they've really concentrated on their offensive part of the game. Bryson, who quarterbacks, also handles the point after chores. Good snap, the kick is up. And we are tied at seven with 5.51 remaining in the first quarter. Sturgeon Bay got down early, but they've come back to deadlock it at seven. And here it is one more time. Good surge on the right side. Quinn Mann getting the touchdown. I bet she scores in this play. <laughs> Sean Lund really got blocked. Uh, I, I couldn't pick up the number, but he really got blocked by the by the right end, and and uh, that was really the key block in the touchdown. The right offensive end for uh, Ashland. That would have been. Uh, well, you know, I think we heard a giant whew, from Gordy Saren. Jim Adams. Because, like you said, his ball club stopped themselves two different times, and then thanks to the turnover by Ashland, they're able to come back and uh, get on the board. That's one, of the, that's one of the things about the option game is if, especially if you're making an inside read with a fullback, it's a risky offense. You get high dividends if you can get on the highway on the outside. But to get there, you're going to have some, you're going to have some of these problems. The quarterback fullback exchange is one of them. Let's point out again that Ashton playing without their number one quarterback, Mike Shemlock, has that thumb injury. And so Jason Zach in his absence. Straight up the gut they go. Great field position. And it's one of the Lund brothers again. This time it's Eric Lund. Well, I think if you just call the name Lund, you'll be right one way or the Most other. The you time. know, it's offense or defense. <laughs> there he goes, just up the Missed gut. Tackle. They've got so much speed on this Ordock team that you're going to see some tackles being missed simply because they, the kids are out of position. Into the secondary. Well, that particular play is called, Lund. That's called the wham. They lead both the backs, give it to the third back. It's a big part of the uh, the wishbone offense. Uh, Land, an all-conference performer, rushing for over 1,500 yards thus far with 22 touchdowns. He's also a sprinter on the track team. And by the way, he was also player of the year in the Lumberjack Conference. Mayday and Sider really did a great job of opening up hole on that side. Second and two, right at midfield. This time they go left, and this time it's Sean Watlin. Watlin has the first down and then some. Bob must have said we're going to whammy to the right, and now we're going to whammy left. That is, uh, if you can't stop it, they're going to keep coming at you. 
Now, Sean Watlin was the offensive player of the year in the conference, and his teammate Sean Lund was the player of the year overall. That's right. Nice honors, and especially when they're on your team. Zach this time handing off, staying on his feet is Sean Lund. Lund peels off eight, almost nine yards on the play. Now the Clippers are trying to really put pressure on the outside, make sure they take away the pitch. Therefore, they're coming with that inside running game, a lot of power, and it, you could see one break here if, if uh, if the secondary for the Clippers isn't going to make a good tackle here, we're going to be, we're going to be seeing some long runs from the from the middle. They of the are field. about a ta an arm tackle away from very nearly breaking that one, Ken. I'm impressed with the explosiveness of the Ordockers' offensive line. They really come off the ball hard. Second and three. This time it's Sean Watlin. Watlin spins for the first down, advancing it to about the 31-yard line. So Ashland coming right back at Sturgeon Bay after the Clippers had tied it at seven. The Ordock is putting together a drive of their own after a good kickoff return. There you see Gordy Saren, 14th year on the sidelines, 18 overall at Sturgeon Bay. Little inside counter. Sean Lund gets the call and he got about four yards before the Clipper defense pushed him back. Pretty soon you're going to see him go to the highway on the outside. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they, they get you to anticipate as a defense, and once you anticipate where you think you might go on a particular play, then they hit you, you know. You're going to see the secondary start to move up and say, I've got to help my buddies up inside. And when that ball goes outside, they can't get the, the pressure from the inside out and the right angles. And, and uh, when they pull the when they pull the plug here and, and start to go outside, the secondary for the Clippers is going to have to really meet the test. Straight ahead, once again, just trying to keep the defense honest. And then, like you say, now they might run that same play, only taking it to the outside. Well, I don't think Bob is going to go outside. Ashland's not going to go outside unless uh, the Clippers stop the running game. He's going to test him from tackle to tackle. And right okay. now, right now, Ash is coming off the ball very, very quick. An official's timeout. We've got an equipment malfunction for one of the players down on the defense for Sturgeon Bay trying to fix his helmet. They like to run over to Dan, uh, was it Burke Schneider? Burke Schneider. A nice size kid, 6'1", 215, senior. He has the longest name in high school football in the country. There's about 26 <laughs> letters in that name. We've got a few of those in Rapids. <laughs> Third and two for the Ordockers. Two and a half and counting in a wild and woolly first quarter of the Division Three state championship game. There they go. First and in some, spinning, still staying on his feet. Watlin, Watlin down inside the 10 to about the seven yard line. He's a hard guy to bring down, being only 5'7". 12.5 yard average for the season, and he is a great cutback runner. He looks to the outside, but he's always looking to come back inside. Watch the spin. They have him wrapped up, but he spins away from the tackle. The cutback is what's beautiful here. There it is. There was a spin, and he still stays on his feet. you got to get him low. you got to get him low. He's only 5'7". Well, <laughs> Squirming for about three yards, Sean Lund. And get it to about the five-yard line. It'll be second and goal from the five. Ashland driving. Locked at a seven-all knot with Sturgeon Bay. Two teams unbeaten. Very impressive offensive first quarter, isn't it? Oh, wow. Kidding. Of course, they won it all when they beat Grafton in 1984. Tommy Mistel was a head coach then. Same type of offense. First man through. But that year they won it with great defense. They, uh, it was a close ball game and they just played super defense against Grafton. Two to the ball carrier there. Three year starter for Bob McLeod. 874 yards on the ground. Coach McLeod says he might be one of the most dedicated players in the weight room. Third and goal from the two yard line. They 
They try to give it to their fullback, Tudor, again, and Tudor is denied. It's going to set up a fourth and goal from about the one-yard line. They're Zach the going over to the sideline, getting uh, some last-minute instructions from the coaches. They're in the right offense for making a yard. Uh, it's it, it's so difficult to stop a wishbone offense for you know a yard or two. They just got so many people they're going to put in your face. They come at the defense like an army. Let's see if the Clippers can do that. Fourth and goal from the one. And they did they stop them. Tudor, they went with Tudor again. The third time was not the charmer for the senior fullback. The Clipper defense turns them away with just seven seconds left in the first quarter. A big defensive stand by Sturgeon Bay. Je they were there in numbers for Sturgeon oh. Bay. Whole defensive front. Must have been good scouting. They must have said when they're down there, they're going to come with the fullback. Well, Gordy Sharon has to say it. we did okay. Time has expired after the first quarter. It's easy to second guess, but I'm, I'm a little surprised they didn't come with that wham. Get those two blocks, you know, guys up in front there, block everybody down and kick out. They've had so much success with that. We've had a wham of a first quarter between the Ordockers and the Clippers tied at seven. Saturday morning at 9, you can watch the WIAA Division II championship game between the Menominee Indians and the Ashwaubenon Jaguars. That's Menominee versus Ashwaubenon in the Division II title game Saturday morning at 9 on this Wisconsin Public Television station. Well, we've had everything in the first quarter. We had goal line stands. We've had turnovers. We've had long plays, big plays, in between plays. What a whale of a first quarter. G uh, uh, Gordy Sharon can thank Gary Raybach, his assistant coach, for that stand. He's their weight training coach. He's the guy who spent a lot of time in the offseason with these kids. And look at the strength and power to stop that on the one yard line. A wishbone attack. That's where you, that's where the, the, the working in the weight room and, and the strength program pays off right there. For all those kids who are listening, you want to be here in Madison? That's what it takes, right? Start pumping that iron, you bet. Now you see Gordy Sharon, he was huddled up with his offense and uh, they are deep in a hole, but I'm sure they'd much rather be in a hole right now as opposed to a 14-7 hole, right? <laughs> Get out of that hole. Probably see a quarterback sneak here. I don't know if he's going to hand that ball off. There it is. And there was a gap there, and he got up across the five-yard line, almost to the seven-yard line. Good call. You just don't want to hand the ball back in the end zone and, and, and risk a, a safety. And uh, Now he's got some work to, room to run and, and work his offense. Chris Bryson, a four-year starty for Gordy Sarin. 16 touchdown passes, five interceptions, as we said, better than 55% completion rate. Four of these kids started as freshmen. They took their lumps their first three years. Uh, they were seven and two last year. Almost made it to the finals, though. Almost got here. A little quick pass to the outside and staying on his feet, Excellent. getting some additional running room. Number 84, John Walker. That extra effort's what's really paying off for their... Uh, for their offense right now. Critical first down. You know, Sturgeon Bay, you know, you talked about their size, especially in that goal line stand. See what the thing about Walker, you know, he's a he's a state high jump champion last year. Nice target to have, huh? You can go up there and get it. Strength and power in those legs. But Coach Sharon was telling me that uh, their team is so big they can't fit them all on a bus. They had to divide them up on a bus and a couple of Suburbans <laughs> to come down here. Nice problem oh, to have. Yeah. Oh, Bryson yeah. going deep. He goes up. He looked for John Walker in and out of Walker's hands. And Bryson throws a good pass. The next thing you're going to tell me, they got to play a four-man line because a five-man <laughs> won't fit on the field. Huh? Well, <laughs> if, they, if they have big splits, that's the case. Watch this pass now. Bryson is throwing. 
into a swirling wind, and uh, he's got some mustard behind that one. Kind of you see his numbers for the year? Kind of threw into a crowd there. Yeah. Gordy Sierra was saying, I like the way you throw it, but not with so many purple jerseys around. He was able to put up one hand, but not two. Second and ten, following the incompletion. And no running room at all for Quinn Mann. Great plays. That was uh, making the stop that time, number 62. And I just lost him. McKeever made the stop. Good penetration. Richard McKeever, a senior, sets up a third and ten. No gain on that play. Bryson back to pass. They're trying to set up the screen. They've got it out there, too. On the sideline. And man had problems trying to keep on his feet. And he has stopped short of the necessary yard to get the first down. Now our first punt here. Well, judging by what we see, we'll probably see a fake here, right? Well, no, I don't think so. <laughs> no, not this deep here. Gordy was telling me they have a number of screens. They throw an inside screen to their tight end. They throw a lot of outside screens. They have four different combinations they can do. And they love the screen as they start to develop their passing game throughout the, you know, as the course of the game proceeds. And I think it's a great offensive tool. A high punt. Kind of off the side of his foot. And it goes out of bounds, and we'll have to see where they will spot the ball. They'll spot it. Almost like a turnover, Van. At the 40-yard line. About a 17-yard punt. Stu Jackson has everyone excited about Wisconsin basketball. All-American candidates Michael Finley, Tracy Webster, lead a talented group of freshmen, including the big fellow, Richard Griffith, against Steve Antrim's UW-Milwaukee Panthers and Wisconsin's home opener. Don't miss UW-Milwaukee versus Wisconsin Saturday night at 10.30 on Wisconsin Public Television. Well, the Ordockers were able to come up with a big stop, get some good field position here. Uh, now the Clippers are going to have to depend on their defense again. And they say that you really get about five uh, momentum changes during a ball game, where the emotion will really sway one way or the other. We've got one of, uh, one of the more interesting stories uh, on the defense for Sturgeon Bay, number 64, Josh Levine. Hearing impaired player, and if I'm not mistaken, the, the woman that relays in the messages is standing over there, not too far, a coach over from Gordy Saren, and she gets in the necessary signals to Josh Levine, a 5'10", 185-pound senior for the Clippers. He's her middle guard, and he's been playing very, very good. No flag there. I think it was just a... Uh, it's a good place to play somebody uh, that's hearing impaired, right over the center. You see that ball being snapped. The full house backfield, of course. And running away from a tackle, almost breaking it yet again as Watlin. He was slowed, and then he kept on his feet. Boy, he does a great job of just keeping those legs churning. And always looking for the cutback, which is going to get him the big yards. Now you remember, these kids have averaged 12 and a half yards a carry, both their running backs. Well, they average 220 pounds per man tackle to tackle. <laughs> That's not all bad, right? No. Second and five for the Ore Dockers. Little inside counter. Watlin has the first down inside the 30, down to about the 27. Would you believe he's already over 100 yards unofficially? Sean Watland, when you've gained 1,357 yards coming in, you can understand why. He's got the hot hand. They're going to get him the ball. Unless uh, the Clippers can stop that running game, you're not going to see the ball in the air for the Dockers. Because when you can pick up six yards, seven yards oh. at a clip. 
No need to put it in the air. No. There are some who say only bad things can occur when you put the ball in the air. Well, things have changed a little bit yes. in high school football. Quarterbacks go to camps. They throw in the offseason to their, to their receivers and their friends. And uh, the passing game has really been more sophisticated than ever in high school football. So uh, you, you can throw the football with good accuracy and, and really perform well. But I, I do like the running game. I'm, I'm really impressed with, uh, with the wishbone and the way the or doctors are running it. Tudor picked up four yards on the fullback dive. There you see Gordy Saren in the middle of your screen. Pencil behind the ear. Counter. Paul Tudor. He was denied earlier in close fourth and goal from the one yard line. Tudor picks up about three and a half yards. It's going to be third, and uh, we'll call it maybe three. The Ordockers have only pitched the ball one time here, it was for a score. But they're selectively waiting to see what the defense is going to be doing. To, and right now, they're trying to take away that pitch. So they're going to stay between the ends and inside those tackles as long as they're making those kind of yards. Ball right on the 20-yard line, third and three. Oh. And there was movement on the defensive line. Now, were they drawn off, or did they get offside before the snap? Coach's nightmare. Offside, defense, automatic first down with a five-yard penalty. Made things easy for the Ordockers there. Can't help it. The kids are really geared up and pensive. They want to stop that first down and that little voice inflection or cadence change. Excellent job by center Max Davis there. See, he saw they were off sides. He went ahead and snapped the ball. But you draw it with that cadence. But they could have gotten back before the snap if he doesn't snap. No, you, you cross the plane, it's over. In high school football, all you have to do is cross the plane. Okay. Lund the ball carrier. Pick up of about two on the play. Second and eight. Clippers are doing a nice job on defense. They really want to stop the, the, the inside game, and they're coming up and getting in their face. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm waiting for the for the Ordockers to come outside. There you go. Now they Zach calls his own number. He cuts it back up inside. He threatened to go outside with a pitch and decided to keep it himself. Pretty good decision by the backup quarterback, Jason Zach. You took the words out of my mouth. Very impressed with that. It would have been a bad choice to make the pitch here. Because they had it well covered to the outside. Yeah, well, they, actually, after I looked at that, he might have been able to pitch the football, but a good choice. Got him the first down, and now they get four cracks to bang it in there, four yards. Sturgeon Bay denied them when they had it goal to go the last time. And thus far, at least on that play, Watlin had nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Ridden hard to the turf by Jeff Schley. Well, when you start getting it in that four down territory, you've got to start thinking about, well, we got to score. And thus far, uh, Ashland has had, had problems the last series. And I'm sure that could be a concern for Bob McLeod. But well, you, you get yourself into a problem where you want to bang it straight ahead, but then the defense accordions and they, they close everything up and they constrain. So it becomes tougher and tougher as you get down there in that, in that right where they're at right now. He may want to go outside if he doesn't get it in here. And Watland does not get across the plane for the touchdown, so it's going to be third and goal to go from inside the one-yard line. Uh, they're in there pretty tight now. It's about a ball away from six. I wonder if we'll see the Ashland punter today. <laughs> They've been pounding that ball. And a little mix-up in the backfield. And Zach, I don't know if he intended to hand that ball off or run down the line for the option, but he was denied the opportunity, John Walker. And now they lost 
It two looked yards like they missed the option. He, this is the counter here, and he was supposed to get it to fullback, and wisely. Great surge there, though, by Walker. Yeah. Wisely hung on to the ball rather than laying on the ground. And it might have even been Josh Levine in there as well. So now you're from three yards away, fourth and goal. I'd almost bet on the option right now. They're going to come out and try and get some leverage on the corner. Pitch back to oh. Watland. Watland going for the corner. Touchdown. Quick pitch. All right. Now they haven't showed that much this year. No wrinkle. Nice time to pull it out of the offense, oh. huh? So Sean Watland. Salty little play here. Not, look at the pulling guard here. Well, nice look at block. the pressure that Zach got. He got rid of that ball just in the nick of time. Because no sooner was that ball out of his hands. You watch this, and he was wrapped up. Well, this Watland's a good running back. I, I'm really impressed with the way he, he knows where to go. He knew right now I can, I can get the leverage and get to the corner of the end zone, and he did it. Here comes a try for two. And Zach was stopped by Levine. Now somebody was offside there, or Levine made a great play. So the two-point two point try nullified by Josh Levine, the senior. Now there's no way that kid's ever going to get drawn off by the quarterback. He's watching the ball. <laughs> Just an outstanding individual effort by Josh Levine. Trapping Zach. So Ashland denied the two-point try. But they lead by a count of 13 to 7. If you're enjoying this game as we are, we'd like to hear from you. If you have any comments about Wisconsin public television sports coverage, do give us a call at 1-800-253. 1158. That's 1 800 253 1158. Well, we've had a lot here in the first half of play between the Ore Dockers and the Clippers. Ashland on top by a count of 13 to 7. Now it's Sturgeon Bay's turn to come back. You know, and Sturgeon Bay didn't just uh, fold up here. They, they played pretty good defense. Uh, the Ore Dockers had to work their way down the field. Well, here's the replay on the try for two, I believe, as they quickly kicked it up. But, uh, hey, guys, you did it too soon. Here is the effort by Josh Levine, and Zach never had a chance. And that could be big down the line. We could look back at that and say that was the play of the game. Puts a little pressure now on the, on the uh, Clippers offense. They've got to come down and, and keep in control of this football. Try and get some points on the board before the uh, half ends. See, watch the surge at Levine. He, he took Zach out on the touchdown. Zach, like I said, got rid of that ball just in the nick of time before he was uh, trapped by Levine. So Levine has uh, let his presence be known. Four minutes, 16 seconds in the first half. Ashland leading Sturgeon Bay 13-6. Short kick. Walker oh, wow. fumble. Picked it up, and the Purple Ants swarm John Walker. That was too bad because he had he caught the ball on the 20, and he probably would have got it back up to the 35 or so, and now it's 15 valuable yards. He kind of slipped out of his hand. <laughs> you know what? I think he was guilty of just looking up field. He saw that green turf in front of him and might have just taken his eye and hands off the ball. Now they got to be careful here. They got to control the football and make sure that they don't turn it over down in this uh, in this red zone. This is danger. Good ball control. Get some field position. Bryson with time, and I don't know if he was going for Walker deep or for Adams a little bit shorter than that, but it was right in between them. It was. <laughs> they were both in the in the line of flight. Shimlock there is the number one quarterback normally for Ashland. He's in the secondary. Well, Bob told you what, uh, excuse me, uh, Gordy told you what he wanted to do. He's going to come right out and get after this uh, uh, time here at the end. He wants to get down the field. You could see how that wind, though, took that ball. It almost knocked it off the flight where I think Grayson had intended for it to go. The draw action. And 
the draw fool no one. Well, I'll tell you Jeff Morovic making the stop and a little Sean. slow in getting up is Sean Lund who was shaken up on the play. It didn't fool him, he was right there. Morovic that should be. And Lund is, might have just had the wind knocked out of him. Hopefully that's all it is. A double team here on the delay. One guy, two guys. He just made a great hit. That was a good face-up tackle. These Lund boys are football players. So it's third and ten for Sturgeon Bay's Clipper offense under the direction of senior quarterback Chris Bryson. And a mix up and actually just a great defensive play. 62. That's Richard McKeever. He came in and made the hit. He wasn't even listed on their number one uh, defensive unit, Richard McKeever. We better write his name down. Uh, I already did. <laughs> I'd have underlined it. Uh, looking for a little counter action there, and now we've got a, a situation where uh, you got to kick the ball out, and the Ordockers are going to have a chance to get the football with about two, two and a half minutes left. Look out, got a wall set up. Very good tackle. And that was number 10 for Ashland on the reception, and that's Pat Jolma. And, Le and Levine made the tackle. In-state rival, UW Green Bay, flies into the field house on December 8th to take on Stu Jackson's basketball Badgers. Phoenix head coach Dick Bennett has four returning starters from last season's squad. You can watch Michael Finley, Tracy Webster, and Super Frost Rashard Griffith take on this veteran Phoenix club right here on this Wisconsin public television station. It's the Phoenix against the Badgers December 8th at 1045 on Wisconsin public television. Ten buses came down to, from Sturgeon Bay to support the Clippers, and it looks like across the field there, all that purple and goal that there isn't anybody left in Ashland. <laughs> I don't know how many buses they brought down or what happened, but there's a lot of people supporting the Ashland crew too. I have a feeling that's true of most any team that's involved in the state championship, whether it's in football, it might be in basketball or whatever. It's just great to see the kind of community support that these teams generate when they get to this juncture of their season. You know that Ashland uh, offense uh, scored 517 points this time. It, you know when you th just think about 500. Well, they went over points. 50 points three times during the course of the season, and it could have been worse. He told me that he pulled a lot of his first stringers, uh, you know, before halftime. You want to tire him out? They go to the fullback Tudor. timeouts remaining for both teams. Um, 215 and counting uh, in the first half. Ashland with the ball and the lead at 13-7. Tudor going out might have been shaken up on the play. You just might see an end around here. You might see some kind of a trick play where they're going to. The wishbone has a tendency to do that now and then. Uh, maybe even pass off of it. Now they got Jolma split out to the near side. Pitch back. Here uh -oh. goes Watlin to the outside. Goodbye. Can he turn the corner? Goodbye. Down the sideline. Driven out of bounds. A tackle saving play. Otherwise, Watlin goes the distance. Well, he just had to jump to get that and push him out of bounds. That was Bryson who rode him out of bounds, and they almost didn't get off the pitch. Watch Bryson trying to get to. It wasn't Grayson, actually, it was number 33. And that's Matt Schaap. He ran past Grayson, and Schaap had to save the day. Looking for the pass, he's got Joma downfield. Oh! Instead, he finds it's going to be a touchdown to Watlin. Watlin walks in for the touchdown. 
Unbelievable. He could have get, gone in there backwards. Wallen has all three touchdowns. Well, they've only thrown one pass and it's for a score. Pretty good completion rate, <laughs> huh? <laughs> he puked it up there. Look at that. It's about just outrun people. Look at Watch Watlin now. Oh, okay, it's pretty easy. Well, a team that runs the ball, you don't expect them to put it up in the air, but uh, throwing caution into the wind, as they say. Ashland adds to the lead, and they will attempt to go for two again. Last time they were denied by Josh Levine. Let's see what unfolds here. This Watlin's an impressive football player. Oh, you, is fan. he ever? He's been doing an awful lot for him. And there's that guy, Levine. And there goes Lund. And Lund is denied on the play by Schopf. But Levine got the initial surge. Give an assist to Levine on the play. And Lund, the ultimate tackle to stop it. So they are denied the two-point conversion for the second straight time. The lead, 19 to 7, with 1.37 remaining. Field position is so important in high school football. You know, you want to go 80 yards and you want to drive it, but uh, I'd rather have that my opponents down there and they're with their backs to the wall than have the football with my backs to the wall. You, you just you just don't have the, the well. Your offense has to go so far and, and be flawless all the way down the field. It's kind of a decision right now for the uh, Clippers. Uh, well, what do they do? Do they? Depends where they get the football. If they can get it out there around the 35 or 40, we can get some room to breathe uh, and get a shot, a couple shots down down deep. Uh, I would say go ahead and, and play your game. Their game is to throw the football, so and Grissom can do it. Let's let's get after it. John Walker, the single deep man, and Walker, another short kick from about the 13-yard line, going trying to get to the outside. Still on his feet, across the 30, and driven out of bounds. So now you're some 70 yards away. If you're Gordy Saren, do you play conservative, or you say, hey, let's get back into this game? I don't know. I, you know, you got your two-minute offense. You got your full complement of timeouts. He's got to get some momentum back. Uh, you know, if he moves the football a little bit here, uh, You're two going. possessions behind in terms of... Uh, Scoring. Yeah. He's going trips to the left here, so it looks like he's going to open her up. From the 31, Bryson with time finds a seam. What a catch. Jim Adams. There we go. That'll stop the clock as they reset the chain to minute 21. A super grab by Adams. Six foot, 175 pounder. And he's got a great tattoo on his arm there. <laughs> Timeout taken by Ashland. I'm sure they might want to change some things up in their secondary. Well, that was just great execution. I don't know if it was any secondary problem. It was just, uh, look how hard he throws the ball here. He throws a little bit like Ty Dittmer. <laughs> <laughs> he does. He's got that good, hard action. He, he steps into his pass. Number 14. Bryson to Adams. And they are into Ashland territory. They spotted at the 49 yard line. 121 remaining. The last drive. Whiteland on the 23 yard pass. Well, the Ardockers certainly want to keep them out of the end zone here. If they can go in with a 19-7 lead, it's going to really be a big lift for them. I think they get the football second half. Gordy Saren, last minute instruction for his offensive unit as the Ord Docker defense comes back out onto the field after going to their sidelines and huddling up with head coach Bob McLeod. The work out of the eye. Play fake. Bryson finds the intermediate man going out of bounds, making the grab. John Walker. Uh, they're in a, uh, the Yardockers are in, a, in what we call a cover two. 
They ran a fade to the outside about 15 yards, and Grisson threw one right on the rope. Well, that was a nice, very, very nice executed play. Look at that. And he was right in the seam of that secondary. Out of bounds. Couldn't been, you can't draw it up any better than that. Let's keep it going here now. Chips left. 115 remaining. Clock stopped after he got out of bounds. Bryson with time and overthrown. Walker was the intended receiver and just a little bit too much on Bryson's pass. I'd almost bet the next time you're going to see uh, the Clippers pass is going to be something underneath. Uh, the Ordockers are dropping everybody deep, and it looks like they're 15 yards in the flat that they can operate in. Not even a high jump champion could pull down that pass. <laughs> no, but you're going to see somebody come up underneath. And they, it's trip left. Somebody's going to go deep, and someone's going to come underneath. They, they just have to. Look how deep the Ordockers are. Man, Walker, and Adams split to the left side. Here it comes it out is. of the backfield. Man, and not much of a gain, about a six-yard pickup. Now they call a timeout with 61 seconds remaining in the first half. Two timeouts left for the Clippers. Man kind of, you know, swinging, not out of the backfield, but he had the two other receivers there trying to use them as blockers, but Lund did a good job of playing off of them and making the stop defensively. Now well, let's see, uh, Sturgeon Bay, they've got a good kicker. Kicked the ball fairly decent. Ashland got here by beating Mosinee 30 to 13. Then they turned around and they beat Medford in the level two game. And then in a wild one against Black River Falls, they win a cliffhanger. 27-26, Sean Watlin scored on a 57-yard touchdown run with just one minute, 11 seconds left. Then the Ordockers added the conversion to pull it out. What a heartbreaker for the uh, Black River Falls. Yeah, proud of that. Black River Falls was unbeaten as well. You know, there's probably another dozen or even two dozen teams that could say, hey, we could be there at the, the state finals <laughs> right now. You know, one one penalty at the wrong time, uh, one block kick, uh, anything. It's just a fumble, interception, and it uh, turns their whole season around. Third and four. Now, what's your primary concern here? Get the first down? Absolutely. Okay. They've got plenty of time. They can run eight more plays. Let's see if Gordy Saren agrees with your call here. Looking downfield, Bryson now gets some pressure, unloads the other way, and oh, in and out of the hand. Geez. It was there to number 89, Chris Bellin, and I don't think you're going to see Bellin drop too many passes like that one. Credit Bryson with a good scramble under pressure and waiting and waiting and waiting, showing good patience, and he finds the man, and unfortunately, Bellin just dropped the ball. He wanted to look. He was looking where he wanted to go. He might have heard some footsteps, before too. Before he tucked it in. You got to look it in. So now they have three wideouts to the far side, fourth and four. Now you definitely got to go for the first down. 54 seconds remaining. Pressure. Bryson there, he's run. got it. He's got it. And out he has the first down, and he's ridden out of bounds. Hit Ooh. out of bounds on the play. What a great ball game. Ben Sandin run it, ran him out of bounds. There's 47 seconds left. They got at least five plays they can run. If they provided they get a first down, but uh, at three or four shots in the end zone here. Well, they're not bashful about telling you what they're going to do. They got the three wideouts to the far side. Here it is. Stop us. Well, it spreads everybody out. You got the tight end of the backside. Uh, the key for the yard dockers is gets a, a rush on Grissom. This, this kid, you can't let him throw. He's, he's too good for that. Ashland calls another timeout. And meanwhile, the two coaches pull their teams in and will talk strategy. Here you see Bob McLeod and his counterpart, Gordy Saren. Saren talking to Grayson, his quarterback. This could be a huge momentum builder for Sturgeon Bay to get back into this game. It's not like they're out of it, only 12 points down, but it'd be a lot easier to go into the locker room trailing maybe, say, 19-14 or 19-13 or maybe even 19-15 as opposed to being two scores down, and by that I mean two touchdowns down. 
Well, just for the interest of the game, it'd be it'd be nice to see him go the length of the field and get it in. I know people in Ashland aren't hoping that, but you know, it's, this is a great football game so far, and and uh, you know, I'd like to see it come out in the second half and just be as, as exciting as this. Two contrasting styles: one that likes to run, the other that likes to throw. Although Ashland's last score, here comes the pressure. There oh. goes the pressure. Great job by Beautiful. Grayson. Beautiful. Good block. Looking downfield, still scrambling. Where's Fran Tarkenton? Still looking. He finds a man inside the five-yard line. What a scramble by Grayson. Unbelievable. Fran Tarkenton, where are you? <laughs> Come on down. <laughs> Ty Dittmer out there. He's running around the field. Tarkenton never run that long. He found Ellen Becker. This is a scramble for about 20 seconds. There's 33 ticks left. One guy gets away from. Two guys. Picks up a block Great here. Great block there. Now he's still running. He comes gets back. Away from another guy. Another guy. And he finds. His offensive lineman didn't stop blocking for him. They just kept on. They had faith in the fact that he could run the. Now that he's going to call in. Grayson. Touchdown. After that scramble, he's still thin enough to score the touchdown. <laughs> what a football game. Whoa. You think Grayson worked out in the weight room a lot? Kid's got to be in great shape. He's a heads-up football player. His stock is going up for Division I. His stock is up. He just ran behind Jeff Schleid, a 248-pound senior, and Schleid paved the way for the touchdown to Grayson. And now Sturgeon Bay will use a timeout to discuss whether or not they want to go for one or two, and Grayson would not be denied. Schleid creating the gap, and Grayson filled it. And uh, Gordy Seren say uh, to... Chris, Chris, you had to win it all? No, no, coach, I'm doing fine. Kick the football here. There's no question. You have to kick it. Puts you five points down. Touchdown puts you ahead. Go for two. You're still only. You're still four down. But I have a feeling you're going to score a lot more points if this is an indication. <laughs> this is a scramble. I mean, it, this is a great, great play by Chris Grayson. Could be the could be the best uh, open field play in the in the championships here. Wow. To look downfield and find Allen Becker, just a tremendous vision by Grayson. And you know what? Credit the offensive line, not only for creating some great blocks, but a lot of times you can flip a kid or something like that, and none of that happened. I I'm impressed with his offensive line. They didn't get across to go across the line of scrimmage. They kept looking, working their head, trying to pick up a block. Well, they're going for two here. Okay, on balance line to the right. Are they going to go right? They sure are. Man and man was stopped. Well, there's six points down. He's still a touchdown down. One way or the other, he's still got to get six points. Mm -hmm. and, and I really believe that uh, <laughs> that will not be the last touchdown we'll see in this game. That was a good defensive surge by uh, They strung out the play very nicely. Here is the touchdown run by Grison. Not textbook running. He was running straight up, but he had enough power to carry everybody in with him. 6'4", 200 pounds. You can afford to do that unless you get somebody across from you that's as strong, if not stronger, than you are. He's got the perfect, he's got the perfect, what we say, he passes the look test. If you're a Division One recruiter looking for a quarterback and you see 6'4", 200 pounds, and a guy who's got an arm, uh, he's going to get some serious looks by some Division One people. This game isn't hurting him one bit. Well, I'd say uh, kick it flat. Squib huh, kick? <laughs> well, I don't know. now. <laughs> All that speed on that uh, Ashland team? I would agree. I wouldn't put it back there in 22's hands. Dryson handles a kickoff chores, a line drive shot. It's Watlin. Watlin trying to get to the outside, and he is ridden out of bounds on the play. Ellen Becker driving him out of bounds. Well, we, Ashland has shown the ability to throw the ball, witnessed their last touchdown, sack to Watlin. I'd almost bet my house right now that he's not going to throw the football. <laughs> uh, I think I'd be right in there with you, too, Ken. <laughs> I won't, but I, I would almost bet my house. <laughs> Pitch back. Lund. Almost as good. He's going to run his option. Oh, Lund man. Field. you got to be kidding me. Across the 30, one man to Oh! And Grayson makes the stop. Uh, 
touchdown saving tackle by Chris Bryce, and otherwise Lund goes the distance, and Ashland uses up its last timeout. Great players make great plays. Grisson, you know, he just scores down here and he makes a game saving tackle. But I almost think it might have been a bad cut right here. He made the cut back. Bryson makes the stuff, otherwise, Lund goes the distance. I thought he was in. You've got nine seconds left. You, the, I don't dare say you've got to throw it, not when you've got a running attack like theirs. <laughs> You know, they make that pitch on the option. It's just like throwing a 30-yard pass, <laughs> especially when the defense is backed off. See, now they're backed off looking for some kind of loose play, and they're not going to pressure the corner real hard. He gets good blocking right here. Nice block that time. Cuts it back, and now Grison. Now look at him. He's retreating, trying to get an angle. Pushes away Jolma, and Grison with a touchdown saving tackle. Otherwise, Munn goes the distance. Kid's a winner. That might be a real, real important play as we look into the second half. A concerned look about the face of Gordy Saren. Say, come on, guys, stop him. <laughs> Big decision now for Ashland. They've got uh, nine seconds. You know, I think you maybe, you know, with two passes, you can put two in the end zone and have a shot. Or if they got a kicker, nice, be nice to go in with, a, with an extra three points. Right now, it'd be a 37 yard kick. Eric Lund is uh, their kicker. Who else? Looking deep. He's open. He had him. He's open. He was. And it's going to be intercepted. It's He's coming out. And what a way for the first half to end. Uh -oh. Interception, and he <laughs> fell down. <laughs> Matt Schopp with the interception in the end zone and then returned it and simply ran out of gas. Well, look at the replay. This if, is a treat, you if know. Zach looks initially, he had the man down there. This excitement, you know, I read from that 6 14 game last time, and now we're here with every play as it puts you on edge. So a wild and woolly <laughs> first half comes to a close. And both teams will go it. to the locker room, I guarantee, out of breath. The Ord Dockers on top of the Clipper, Clippers by a count of 19 to 13. Vance now, Ken Beagle back with you moments away from the start of the second half. And let me tell you, if the second half is anything like the first, we've got a barn burner on our hands. We'll look at the first half stats, and uh, the numbers certainly favor Ashland. Look at the rushing yardage, the total yardage, but the turnovers, that's a key area there, Ken. And the goal line stands by uh, the Clippers. I think they've had, uh, you know, some big defensive plays that, that kept them in the ballgame. So Sturgeon Bay will kick it off. Bryson handles the kickoff, and before he had a chance to put the foot to it, the ball is blown off the tee by the swirling winds here at the stadium. We'd like to point out uh, one of the key players in the Sturgeon Bay attack, Chad Hoiska, a 5'7 senior who ran for over 1,600 yards during the season sprained an ankle and he saw limited and I do mean limited action and we'll have to see if he's going to be available even for the second half. That's a big man out of their attack. A short kick. Watlin still on his feet uh, and he's still on his feet finally driven to the turf by Josh Levine about a 25 yard return. Outstanding field position now for Ashland. There you see the Ashland first half drives and uh, a fumble. And they turn it over on downs and then an interception, but the three touchdowns. And they have the lead at 19 to 13. There you see the reserve quarterback, Jason Zack, and he did a marvelous job in relief of Mike Shimlock. Real clutch kid. They're in good field position here, and the problem that uh, that poses to Sturgeon Bay is now they've got four downs to make the 10 yards. Well, not quite. As soon as they cross the 50, they'll be almost be in four downs. Sean Lund, the ball carrier on that one. Lund had a big half, seven carries, 76 yards. Watlin, 10 carries, 132 yards, the longest, a 64-yard touchdown run. 
Grayson was the leading ball carrier for Sturgeon Bay with four carries and 22 yards, but he was 8 of 13 in the air, one interception. The pitch back, what? and he barely got the pitch back back to the man, and that was Watlin, and Watlin is driven hard out of bounds. And we'll have to see where they have the spot as to whether or not Watland got enough for the first down. Yes, it is a first down. They move the chains. Here it is as he goes to the outside. That's a nice bit of running, though. Grison trying to head him out of bounds, and he did just that. Zach to the first man through. Sean Lund. And Lund peels off, maybe six yards on the play. Yeah, and you can tell that Ashland's coached to get their, their, uh, their shoulders upfield and run north and south. And, and uh, that's a punishing way, especially in the second half. It's a punishing way to have to stop an offense. It, it almost seems to kids like there's just a lot of people in their face and like an army's coming at them when you have to continually hit people. Zach went over to the sideline to get the play. Let's see what they call second and four inside the 40-yard line. Almost exploding into the secondary was Sean Lund. And Lund lunges for the first down. They'll move the chains yet again. And this is exactly what Ashland wanted to do. Come out here, keep the ball on the ground, consume the clock, and get a touchdown if they can and keep it out of the hands of, of Grison. Now, you know, there's a seven men going both ways for Ashland. And maybe we saw a little bit of fatigue in the second quarter. Certainly after they were trying to run down Grison on that scramble, <laughs> they should get fatigued. Maybe a factor in the fourth quarter. Under the 10-minute mark. Here goes Watlin. You know, I'm, he is so small at 5'7", I, I really believe that it might be very difficult for the defensive players to try to pick him out of the crowd to find out where is the guy and then once they find him by that time he's got such good foot speed he goes 8 10 12 yards and he's by him in good peripheral vision he's always looking for the cutback always trying to get that linebacker to get one hand on you and then he can break a tackle Watlin the offensive player of the year in their conference Lund, not a lot of running room that time. I'm impressed with uh, the offensive line for Ashland. They're not really big kids. They're all 6'1", 6 6'2", 6 5'10", in that 200-pound range, 2'15". Two, two well, they they're two players. They they're average okay. <laughs> <laughs> But they're players. I yes. mean, they're, they're great blockers. Getting in people's face, and they, they just seem to hang on their blocks. I think we great effort for their offensive line. Zach keeps it himself, and he has the first down. Pretty good job of recognizing what the defense had and then making the correct read. Now, Zach is second-team quarterback. You, you can tell he's been working the option, you know, early on in the lower levels of their program. He could he have knows pitched it back, but he saw the hole there, and he did a nice job. Made the good read. And we said that how, how the program has really come along for Sturgeon Bay last year. They just missed out on the playoffs. In fact, their last two games, that would have gotten them into the playoffs. They lost by one point each. Sturgeon Bay is trying to do some games on the outside by their end coming down on the quarterback and then sometimes taking away the pitch. There goes Watlin. Watlin peels off six. That keeps the clock running. Eight and a half minutes in the third quarter. Ashland with the ball and Ashland with a 19-13 advantage. Ashland's got to toughen up now. They got to tighten in and, uh, and make them. Uh, get those tougher yards in you know, on first Sturgeon down. Bay. Well, I, it, right, but, but Ashton right now, six, six uh, yards on a first down, is, uh, that's too much. I think their first down plays have been just outstanding. No running room at all that time. Josh Levine at the bottom of the pile, and uh, he has played himself a whale of a game thus far. 
that's high school football. You can take kids who are not going to play much in college, but in, in you know, who knows how well he's going to play. I'm not trying to say that, but but average kids who with, with great desire can can uh, fill in your football team, and you win with those kind of boys. Your great athletes are going to do the, make the great plays for you, but most of the time you've got to have those pluggers in there that are going to be getting the job done in the big games. Third and five, but really it's four down territory at this juncture. You're inside the 20-yard line. I'd say they're going to go outside and make a little pitch here. And crossing the line was Sturgeon Bay's defense, and that's going to give them at least at or near the necessary yardage for the first down and just a, a mental mistake. And in this that's portion a killer, of the field, right? you can't have that. That's a killer. That's just a killer. They had a chance there to... You know, make a big play and, and force them into a fourth down situation. Now it's in a momentum that, that, that takes place right here. Now they got to start all over again. That was uh, Corey Hunsader, and just in his anxiety, more than anything else, trying to make a play, trying to create a play defensively. He stepped over the line, and that's all they needed. And that was enough, in fact, for the first down. So it's first and 10 now for the Ore Dockers. And they have the ball at the 12-yard line. They are knocking at the door again. A busted play there, and Zach had nowhere to go. I, I think he missed Lund initially, and Zach had to eat it, and eat it he did. Tell you what's happened with Sturgeon Bay now. They've made adjustments at the halftime with their defense, and they're doing a little more blitzing at the corner. They're Here starting they to come with their linebackers. Yep. That was Kevin Berry leading the charge. 6'3", 244-pound sophomore. The corners are up. They want to stop the run. A loss of two, second and 12. Pitch back, and a nice job. Oh! He got away from it. Wow. You were just about ready. I don't know ready. how Watlin did that. <laughs> you, you were just about ready to say Jim Adams made a great play, and he got out of there. Was it Jim Adams? No. Jim Adams, yeah. Was Adams Jim? had him, I yeah. think. Yep, that's Adams. He's all over him. Wow. Still sets up a third and 13. What, do they try to go to the wide side of the field? Sure. That's what it's there for. Zach, still on his feet. They've got to get the ball down to the two-yard line. It's going to set up a fourth and probably about eight to go. Now, should they try a kick, they would be kicking with the wind. you got to come away with some points in this. Right now, it's a, it's a six-point game. Uh, a nine-point game is causes of you know we've got to score twice it's just a must you've got to come up with some points they're going at least for the first down disregarding a try for three so much for the kicker fourth and six from the eight yard line they've got to get to the two or just inside the two and there is another flag that Who was their movement offsides. It looks like, at least based upon what the Clipper players are doing, it was a delay by the Ashland offense. So that makes it fourth and 11. Now well, Ashland must not have a kicker because uh, now certainly it would be an opportune time to do it. Eric Lund. Uh, kicks extra points and unfortunately that's about all the information that we have in that area and judging by what we've seen in their ability to run the ball they probably didn't have too many opportunities to have to kick it <laughs> this extra point the pitch back Watlin and he's going to be stopped but credit Corey Hunsader with great great pursuit second effort of pursuit. Watlin yes and uh, and he forced Watlin to show his hand and turn the play inside when maybe he wanted to go to the outside. He slipped away and then he ran down and pursued him and, and made a shoestring tackle. Corey Hunsader stops the play and that's uh, perhaps a momentum builder for Sturgeon Bay. you got to be impressed with the defense now tightening up uh, right there at great goal line stand. It's the second one in the ball game. 
if you are enjoying this game. We'd certainly like to hear from you. If you have any comments about Wisconsin public television sports coverage, give us a call at 1-800-253-1158. That's 1-800-253-1158. I got to tell you about the comment that uh, Bob McLeod made. He, you know, he said that uh, they're so big in, in Sturgeon Bay, so I didn't know they could grow kids that big eating uh, lake trout and cherries. <laughs> 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 and they do have a lot of lake trout and cherries. They also have a lot of those uh, knickknack shops in that area up there in the peninsula. Have you ever been up there? No, I never have. Potpourri places. Is that right? All pick, yeah, you can buy anything you want up there. Big business, tourists. And like I said, you know, Coach McLeod told me that deal about the buses, and they're not big enough to get them all on the bus. They've got to use suburban vans to, th to boot. Here it is again, and watch Hunsader. And he forced Watlin, and then teammates finish him off, but Hunsader made the play to stop that drive himself. Well, they got 96 yards to go here, or 92 yards to Bryson go. Bryson looking at time, and he finds number 84, John Walker, and Walker is ridden back. Forward motion, though, stopped at about the 16-yard line. Watlin on the stop, and there is an injured Docker player down, and he will hobble off the field. You know, That's uh, Eric Madej. We talk a lot about three-sport athletes. Uh, both these teams are, are laden with kids who, who are uh, basketball players, baseball track people, and uh, you'll find, uh, you know, in high school football, Band, that most of these kids that are any good in these small schools, they're playing a lot of different sports. As we said, Madej going off the field, and uh, he is shaken up. And as we mentioned just earlier, Sturgeon Bay's top rusher, Chad Hoiska, spraining an ankle. And uh, so far, it uh, looks as though he might have punched out for the, the game. You know, he scored 35 touchdowns this year. That's a big chunk of offense to come out oh. of the, uh, <laughs> anybody's offense. Now it really almost makes them a, a, a total throwing team. And that's Hunsay to the first man through. Oh, check that. That was Ellen Becker, the first runner through. Hunsader comes in replacing Ellen Becker. First and 10, Sturgeon Bay moves the chains. They trail 19-13, 3.23 and counting in the third quarter. And this the Division III state championship, a battle of unbeatens. The Clippers at 12-0, the Ore Dockers likewise. Quick pass to the outside in the form of Walker. Walker is ridden out of bounds. They stopped the clock. Nope, they didn't. Pickup of about seven on the play. Little hitch pass. Take two steps down, turn. And, and Grison throws the ball very nice here. And he's throwing it to a great athlete. We're talking about someone who's a state high jump champion. He's got uh, a, a lot of athletic ability out there. I'd like to have him one-on-one -on, -one on most uh, cornerbacks. Morovchek, number 31 for Ashland. Boy, if he can anticipate that play, all he has to do is make the step forward and pluck <laughs> off that pass, and it's uh, yippee skip time. Bryson with pressure, gets up a good block, dumps it off. That's Jim Adams. Adams doing a nice job of breaking off the pattern, coming back to help out Grison as he was forced to scramble. He picked up his blockers. Another thing is that uh, when he caught the football, he, did, he went down with one hand. It was a good no call by the official. Sometimes an official have a tendency to want to blow the whistle and stop the play. Watch his hand go down here, but not his knee. His knee's got a touch. Great acrobatic play if you're Jim Adams. Good athletic ability. Well, it gets them out of the hole now. They've got some room to work. The clock continues to move. 2.15 and counting. Sturgeon Bay trying to go in for what would be a tying touchdown. Hunsader, the carrier, up and over. Pick up of about four yards. Not bad. That's, you know. You pick up four yards here, four yards there. You can do it three times. That's 12 yards, the way I count. <laughs> That's right. And especially when they've got uh, Eric Monday out of there. He's a big 6'2", uh, 220-pound uh, junior uh, tackle for him. 
Uh, I'd be running in that area, or at least testing the, the, the guy who's coming in to, to back him up. Second and seven. Bryson, screen. They set it up set to up. Adams. No, oh, that's Walker. No, oh, yeah, that's Bellin. I'll get it. One of the three. It's Chris Bellin. A screen to the end, Bellin, and uh, we were told by Gordy Saren he is a tough hombre to bring down, and Bellin proves it on this play, the screen. Three-sport athlete, and the momentum has turned again. What a great effort. Nice job of staying on his feet, keeping the legs moving. Lund finally had to go all the way down to the ankles to tackle him. Did you say Lund again? Yes, the other <laughs> Lund. That was Eric, only a sophomore. And there's movement, and Ashland is offsides, I do believe. That's a big play now. They, now they've got four downs to make five yards. They can waste a little bit. That was Richard McKeever who went offsides. Makes it a little easier for your offense first and five as a result of the penalty. Mm -hmm. Bellin in motion. And Hunsater is swarmed Lund. under by Eric Lund. Lund just really had a good blitz on. I'm not sure if it was a blitz. He might have just read that quick. Because as soon as he saw that flow go, he come hard. It was Quinn Mann, not Hunsater. Quinn Mann, the ball carrier, but still the tackle made by Eric Lund. So the five that they gain on the previous call as a result of the offsides they lose three so it's now second and eight for the Clippers they're trying to sail into the end zone to tie this game up once again Bellin in motion play fake Bryson looking deep over the middle is it a catch both referees are looking at one another, and no one, they say, incomplete. They're guessing at it. They're guessing. No one saw it. What a shame. They, got, they must have got screened out and not been able to see it, but no one, was, no one was able to make a call here. Looks like he made the catch. Well, it's hard, to, and we've looked at it from two different angles. So we and we have the use of the replay. They do not. <laughs> a tough call, one way or the other. That sets up a third and eight. Really, two down territory, though. So Bryson with time, and he finds a receiver, and he has the first down to Jim Adams. Bryson on a quick slant to Adams. The pass slightly behind Adams, but he did a nice job of waiting for the ball to arrive. And the third quarter has come to an end, and we go to the final 12 minutes. And Ashland still leading by a count of 19 to 13. Saturday at 12.30, you can watch the WIAA Division I championship game between the Arrowhead Warhawks and the Appleton West Terrors. That's Arrowhead versus Appleton West in the Division I championship Saturday at 12.30 on Wisconsin Public Television. So many times, can I've seen teams at the end of the quarter have to go, even if they're walking, 70 or 80 yards to the other end. They've built up momentum just like Sturgeon Bay has to drive this far, and it seems like by the time they get down there, their momentum has been somewhat diffused by that walk. You talk to the coaches, and you lose that sense of continuity that you've had from driving all that distance. It takes you a play or two to try to get it back, and then oftentimes what will happen to the defense will make a big play, and then you've lost it. That's interesting. I, 
I, I want to go back to this play before the uh, right, right before the, uh, the third quarter. They ran two receivers deep, and he came on a delay underneath on that slant. I think you might see that later on in the ball game yet, the fourth quarter. He was big, wide open. A big third down conversion keeps the drive alive for the Clippers. Bryson, pump fake, trying to go to the end zone, just overthrown. A nice job by Grison to pump fake the defenders, and John Walker was there, the ball was there, but Walker could not track it down. You notice he threw a nice touch pass, nice and soft, right, put it up there, just, just out of his reach. I agree with your call that Grison has the look. He has the look of a Division I player. I'm, uh, I'm surprised Ashland hasn't gotten to him yet uh, today. They haven't sacked him one time, I don't think. I think They've gotten a lot of pressure on him, but Grayson's run away from them. Remember the scramble <laughs> we saw before the first half. Grayson's got those quick feet. Here comes some more pressure. Scrambling, gets a good block. Scrambling, trying to unload, staying on his feet, and he's sacked. A huge loss on the play. You spoke too soon. <laughs> Look at that, all the way out to the 20. 18 yard line. That's a loss of about eight yards. I think we're looking for something a little different here. They're in a tight formation trying to simulate you know, a run action pass and it, that play just didn't develop for him. Rothschild finished off Grayson on the play coming up with a loss sets up a third and 16 and Sturgeon Bay will want and take a timeout. 11-24 in the fourth quarter. Ashland on top by a count of 19-13. Stu Jackson has everyone excited about Badger basketball. All-American candidates Michael Finley, Tracy Webster lead a talented group of freshmen, including Rashard Griffin. They'll take on Steve Antrim's UW-Milwaukee Panthers in Wisconsin's home opener. Don't miss UW-Milwaukee versus Wisconsin Saturday night at 10.30 on Wisconsin Public Television. Well, now, if you're Gordy Saren, what are you calling over? You've got really two plays to try to get 16 yards. You, you got it. That's right. You, you take you take something they're going to give you, get down there maybe up on, a, on the five or the eight yard that line. That little slant and then get it in. to either Adams or Walker has been very effective, and even the little hitch pattern outside there has been an effective play. He might go with a screen. Uh, uh, they've got a complete offense, and that's what's nice about it. You know, you got a kid like Grissom, you can do an awful lot of things. You know what? And I don't know if they have this in their, uh, their playbook, but... Uh, it's raining here now. I just now discovered yeah. that. Kind it of a covered, mist. It's kind of a mist. covered the ball up uh, on the field with a towel. It's coming down pretty good. You can look into the lights and see that it's, uh, you can see just ever so faintly the uh, the fine mist. Only adds to the elements of high school football in November. Looks like he might open up to the wide side of the field here. I was going to say, quarterback draw. Bryson can run well. Here Pressure. comes the blitz from the outside. He got away from it. Looking, looking, unloads. Into the end zone. Intercepted. Intercepted by Watland. Oh. Sean Watland with a great defensive play. Bryson made a remarkable play himself to get away from the blitz. And he threw the ball on, the, on a string. And it's a shame because Jim had. Borovchik almost gets it. And Bryson Jim spins away. Bryson, that's a pretty good pass. The def defender was there, as was the receiver, and Watland with the interception. Jim Adams on the other end of the field was not wide open, but he was—he had some distance between him and the defender, but you he couldn't see it. Bryson couldn't see it. Would you believe that Watland has played a heck of a game, both offensively <laughs> and now defensively? If you are enjoying this game, we'd like to hear from you. If you have any comments about Wisconsin public television sports coverage, Give us a call at 1-800-253-1158. That's 1-800-253-1158. A stop in the action, but no stop in that man's heart. Bob McLeod had to have it beating almost out of his chest as they were looking to go for a six. Grayson scrambled away from his would-be blitzer in Morovchik, and Grayson under fire. And like you say, boy, he was wide open down there. That was John Walker, but. Another goal line stand. Uh, you know, we've talked a lot, a lot about the offense, but the defense is coming up with some big plays, both sides. The car looks pretty calm there, doesn't he? <laughs> Could be that his hands are cold and he's trying to keep them warm. Yeah. 
Well, Ashland, their ability to run the ball deep in their own territory, you, you got to believe that's exactly what Bob McLeod will do. Keep it on the ground, giving it to his uh, outstanding backs, and, protect and either Watlin or Sean Lund. Protect the football, man. You've got to keep it. You first and foremost, yep. you wrap it up. Watlin, who just made the interception, trying to wriggle away for about three, maybe four yards. We're at the 11 minute mark of the fourth quarter. Ashland, a precarious six point lead. While the points have not been as uh, free flowing as they were in the first half, the excitement level has not died down one bit. And all those Ashland fans are on, <laughs> on their feet. Uh, it's exciting right now. What they need to they need to sustain a drive now, and it's a big test for the Clippers. And they make right. a big play defensively. It, they tried to go inside. They being Ashland, and the Clippers would have none of that. Jason Levine, along with Casey Robach, made the play. Kevin Berry's been tough in there. He's only a sophomore. Look at Robach, only a sophomore. 6'5", 252 pounds. If Six. he commits himself to the weight room, he'll be 270 by the time he's a senior. It's got to be muscle. At the 10-minute mark of the fourth quarter, Ashland faced with a third and six. Screen pass. There is a flag down in the backfield. And another late flag. So we've got two flags, multiple flags, illegal motion. That'll be the first call. Forget the second flag. Illegal motion is the call against Ashland. And no doubt Sturgeon Bay will take the call because it, otherwise it would have been a first down. Wasn't it a beautiful play set up? Could have went all the way. Interesting about it, they call it precisely at the right time because Sturgeon Bay had a blitz on. Look, at they're coming with seven, eight people. <laughs> that yellow flag was a big, big. There was, that was the a illegal turnover. block too. Yeah. Now you can see the rain is coming down pretty good right now, and it's a it's blowing right into the face of the Ashland offensive players. Horizontal rain, and it's uh, with a temperature dropping, as I'm sure that it is. Uh, who knows? It could be that white stuff before too long. Great football weather. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been playing any golf lately? Ben? No, uh, <laughs> not in this kind of stuff. Great weather for a dome. Now as the referees sort things out. Well, now that puts the pressure back on the Ordockers. Uh, they haven't punted yet today, I don't believe. Uh, maybe, I can't recall a punt. And uh, maybe you have to punt out of their own end zone. No, at least in the first half, Ashland did not have a punt. Third and a huge hunk of real estate. Third and 13. And fumble. is there a fumble? Who got it? They're trying to peel away the bodies. Ashland keeps the ball, but it sets up a fourth down situation. And now we're going to see their first punt of the game. It looked like uh, Josh Levine uh, reached up and, and somebody grabbed the football. No, it was uh, it was uh, Kevin Berry reached up and knocked the football. Got it loose. Handling the punting will be number 40, Sean Lund. And he is kicking into a fierce win. Pretty good punt. Bryson. Take it up the field. Spins around and advances it to about the 40-yard line where the Sturgeon Bay offense comes on the field with great field position. 8.52 in the fourth quarter. Now, the rain in a passing game is not a factor 
if you can keep the ball dry. If the ball stays dry, you can still throw it. Saturday morning at nine bells, you can watch the WIAA Division II championship game between the Menominee Indians and the Ashwaubenon Jaguars. That's Menominee against Ashwaubenon, the Division II championship game, Saturday at 9 a.m. on Wisconsin Public Television. First and foremost, Division III unbeaten. Ashland against unbeaten Sturgeon Bay. Sturgeon Bay with the ball and a six-point deficit, trying to get it in. That Division II game is going to be a real great one. The field will be loaded with outstanding athletes. We have some pretty good ones right here on the gridiron, too. You bet. I keep saying it, football is getting better in Wisconsin. Uh, the coaching is better. The work ethic in the offseason is better. And I think people are just loving the game in the, in the state. Well, you know, you talk, we, you and I had talked earlier about the 12 the month commitment that it takes to reach this point. And, and I'm sure that we have seen in all of the teams that have gotten to this field that if you don't have that kind of commitment year round, uh, your chances of getting here are not as good as someone that makes that kind of uh, off season type commitment. That's right. Well, here we go. 8.52 left. Got ourselves a real ball game. Bryson. And Sturgeon Bay trying to keep the ball on the ground, consume some of that clock. That's Quinn Mann. Nice call. Pick up of about five yards on the play. If they can sustain a drive and put one in, it'll put a lot of pressure on Ashland if there isn't much time left to run the football. So it's uh, the pressure right now, and the game re remains in the hands of the Ashland defense. Boy, you go back, and if they can get a, a touchdown, they tie it. You go to that earlier missed try for two or the, the decision to go for two as opposed to go for the one. And there is a flag on the play and movement in the line for Sturgeon Bay. And that's the five yard gain that they just had will be nullified. It's second and ten. I think actually what was happening is that I want to say let me, let me look rather than get on the wrong number. That rain's coming down pretty stuck. It's, it's pretty tough out there. It was John Peterson, the center. He had a, he had an equipment malfunction, and I think that he moved in trying to adjust his equipment. And once they got set, you cannot move. Once the quarter, the, the center puts his hands on the ball, the linemen have to stay. And Peterson went to the sidelines, came back, and he's back in there now. So it's second and ten. Bryson going downfield. What a catch. <laughs> nice catch by John Walker, the high jump champ, went up and got it. You know, that's, a, that's called a deep out, and only the real good quarterback can throw that. They go down about 18 yards and come back to 15. Well, keeping in mind, though, Bryson is throwing with the win. But he's throwing, isn't he? Yes. And look at Walker going up. Now you see why he was the Division II <laughs> state high jump champion. He can springboard. I mean, you can't complain about the coverage either. The coverage was there, That's so right. was the ball. Hand off to Mann, and Bryson, in his anxiety to hang or to hand the ball off, got his feet tangled, and it was not a good, clean exchange from quarterback to running back. I don't know how much difference that made because, you know, Ashland is, they're, they're playing great defense. They're, they're coming hard. Every play they're going to the football. And they're not real big kids. Ellen Becker checks in with the play from Gordy Seren's sideline. Ashland relies on quickness more than uh, anything else on defense. Second and ten for the Clipper offense. Under seven minutes and counting in the fourth quarter. Play fake. And it's intercepted. The ball was in and out of the hands of Chris Bellin. And the interception and the opportunistic takeaway by the Ordocker defense. Boy, this game has really been dictated by turnovers. Well, Mike Schmelick almost had the ball in his hands. It went right through his hands. But 
the linebackers for uh, the Ashland defense are really dropping and getting back in their zones. Shimlock, of course, the quarterback, and finally Ellers made the interception. And the Clipper defense has got to do it again. How this game ebb, <laughs> ebbs and flows. Your emotions going up and down like a yo-yo. What did you say the second half, I mean the second quarter, when you said, well, there'll be a lot more points scored? Well, what do I know, right? <laughs> But I said just not too long ago, I said, well, we haven't gotten any points. It has not been lacking for enthusiasm and excitement. Straight ahead and little or no running room. Well, puts it into about a third and four. A little bit of a conservative call there. I mean, if we can get a wide shot, perhaps, you can really see how, if this is rain or snow or whatever, or a combination thereof, is blowing in the faces of the Ashland offense. And it just adds to the difficulty trying to concentrate, get your assignment down, and doing everything that you need to do to make a successful play work. And you're a little bit cautious about going out there on the option and making the pitch. Third and three. And, and it's going to be a first down. Um, Lund, the ball carrier. Well, now the clock's going to work in uh, Ashland's favor. Four more downs. It's going to run it down to three minutes or under. That's still, if, uh, if the Clippers can get a... Uh, a stop here that'll still give him enough time to, to move the football. Productive game for Sean Watlin, who was the ball carrier on the previous play, not Lund. Watlin, the ball carrier. Dockers have three timeouts, and uh, the Clippers have two remaining. Into the secondary. That's academic now because I don't Lund think anyone's going to catch him. No, no one will catch Sean Lund. Touchdown or Dockers. That might be the sealer for the Ashland or Dockers. You know, and that's, I just saw that Sturgeon Bay was trying to blitz, get some people up Pressure. there, and they called him in a blitz situation. And once Lund got into the secondary. The was, dam broke, and he was able to get through. Yeah, that's what happens when you're putting a lot of pressure on with a blitzing defense. Missed tackle right there, though. And Lund showing his breakaway speed. <laughs> he ran for over 1,500 yards during the season. The key is a broken tackle, though. Lund might not ever score a bigger touchdown in his life than that one. The senior for the Ordockers. Here is the try for two. Lund has been a load, and it's going to be intercepted by Grison. But the damage may have already been done because the differential is now 25 to 13 in favor of Ashland. So that means the Clippers are going to need to get two touchdowns and then at least one point after or perhaps two to try to pull this one out. Footballs will be in the air now the last five minutes oh. here. Here comes the blitz, and there goes Lund. Lund coming in. This has had a phenomenal year. Over 1,700 yards, 23 touchdowns. Well, they, the Clippers have got a tough job here, but it, they've, they've got two timeouts. Uh, if they can score quickly, go for an onside kick, or maybe even kick deep and then hope to be, make another stop. I mean, anything's possible here. They're just going to have to make a, get a quick score. If they can get a good return here and get some field position, it, it's, it, it's possible.
The rain continues to pelt the stadium. A high kick. Allen Becker probably should get out of bounds. And they say that he did. Sturgeon Bay will have good field position. And there is Mr. Grayson. The responsibility rests on his shoulders to generate some momentum, some offense, and more importantly, and lastly, but certainly not leastly, some points for the Clippers. He's got the win at his back, but he might also have that slippery ball. It could cause him some problems. Sturgeon Bay has to set sail, if you will. You wonder how much a difference uh, Heistra might have made in the in the game. You know, Chad being out of there with that uh, productiveness in the running game. He finds Bellin. Oh, check that. That's Adams. Well, they've got three nice receivers in Adams, Bellin, and Walker. They go into their two-minute offense. The clock has been stopped to reset. The first down markers. Now they resume it. The count at 450. They really have them, really have them spread out inside. They could run the football easily. Bryson, and they could also pass it. Got to get out of bounds, <laughs> and that's exactly what Walker does. A lot of poise by this Sturgeon Bay ball club. A very well conceived passing game with their trip set. They move people around, but but. Grace is the one who makes it go. Oh, he, he's question. the guy. But it also helps to have three go-to guys in Adams, Bellin, and Walker. Now watch here. When they go trips right, you watch how uh, the Ordockers are defending them. They don't have anybody back to this backside here. I think it could pop their fullback in there for about a oh, seven, six, seven, eight yard gain. Bryson. Instead, they'll pop Grayson back in there. <laughs> and he was pulled down hard from behind. Lund. Makes a stop. That's Eric Lund. If one Lund doesn't get you, the other one will. Unbelievable. And he's only a sophomore. Bryson will feel this hit tomorrow. Not so much the hit, but when he gets slammed to the turf. Good heads up play by Grayson. Boom. Yeah, you almost have to be cautious that you don't want to throw the ball as you cross that line of scrimmage. Well, he raised it up there, wanted to hold the defense a little bit. That's all right. They're, they're almost a first down. There's an injured or docker player down, and it's hard to get a number. Van, we've only ran off about 30 seconds off the clock, and they moved the ball, uh, let's see, about 35 or 40 yards. So it can still be considerably a ball game if they can get in real quick here. That's Richard McKeever, the injured player, down for Ashland. Let's see if we can. He's going downfield right there. He just got popped. He didn't. See, he never saw what hit him. And glad to see that he runs over to the sideline for Ashland. Four twenty-nine. Sturgeon Bay trailing by a dozen at 25-13. Here comes some pressure. Grison gets away. Still looking into the end zone. Underthrown. He had one of two players, and I don't know which one he was throwing to. Whichever one could catch him. Aren't you amazed how many times grison has been hit back yes. there, and he, he just keeps his poise. He, he maintains his balance. He rips off of a tackle and makes a throw. I think the referees need to check his jersey to see if it's coated with Vaseline because <laughs> he just slips away from people. There's one. He is 6'4", and he's 200, but he, you know, he's got balance. Uh, I don't know if he was looking for either Adams or Mann. Third and one. There you go. QB. Good, good call. Draw, and Grayson has the first down yardage. That'll stop the clock to reset the chains. Get your play called right away because when they get those chains reset, she starts up. They shuttle the plays in for the sideline, and you know, they do a nice job, they being Sturgeon Bay, of getting those plays in in a hurry because they have not been called for a delay this, this contest. Unsater brought in the play. Another right one. And he's 
laterals back to Hunsader. Hunsader inside the oh. 15. <laughs> I'll tell you, this guy's like Fran Target. He improvises. He just makes plays up. You know what? I bet you they call plays in the huddle. He probably draws them on the field. He was hit twice here. Right here, he shucks one off, and he comes back and does it again. Right there. There you go. Here, you take it. I don't want it. It's a hot potato. Bryson, and still on his feet. Still on his feet inside the 10. He's going to score. The five, down to about the two-yard line. Chris Bryson. First down, stops the clock. He doesn't need to call a timeout. What a play by Grison. That was total individual sellout effort. He's hit again twice at the line of scrimmage. Referee stopped now. They resume the clock. And it's a touchdown. Now the big decision is, Van, what do you do? Do you go deep or do you onside kick? Well, your first decision is whether to go for one or two. <laughs> but you got to go for you, one. I you got to kick. Yeah, you got to kick. I said that before. You get that one right now. Just straight ahead power footballing and this not a lot there. Grayson simply took what the defense uh, gave them. And Grayson will attempt the point after. Kick is up, and it's good. So that cuts the gap to 25-20 with 3.22 remaining. Now, in answer to your question, do you go deep? I'd say you got to go deep and hope that your defense can stop them. I don't know, they haven't really, they didn't stop the Dockers the last time, but. All the it, more reason to go deep, though. You go deep, you stop them down there. If you get good field position, they've got a kick, and then you only have a short distance They're to punch kicking. it in. They would be yeah. kicking into the wind. Otherwise, if. Uh, but isn't it fun for us to sit up here <laughs> and think about that as opposed to being down on the field? Well, I was right, you know. <laughs> <laughs> And you're trying to think, well, should we go deep? Should we intermediate kick it? Should we pooch it or who knows what? I don't know how good his kicker is, you know. If it's gets Grayson. It. <laughs> who else? <laughs> <laughs> he showed pretty good leg there after running all over the field. I bet you he'll sleep well tonight. Well, if he wins, he will. Now Coach McLeod instructing his players to get up. He's anticipating either a short squib kick or perhaps an onside kick. He's going onside. And, and it's caught by Ashland. 12% of the time we recover one of those. Is that right? That's right, 12% of the time. Aaron Big Boy, and Aaron made a big play. <laughs> big Boy. It was a good onside kick. The problem was you didn't get the kind of bounce off the turf that they were hoping for. Good hands. He had his hands team out there. They all could feel the ball. The, I don't want to give that name of that insurance company, but the good hands people, they were out there, right? The insurance <laughs> you're looking, company? You're looking for one first down if you're uh, Ashland, and right now uh, I don't think you have to worry about pass uh, for, for the Clippers. They got to have people up in their face. Now, if you're Sturgeon Bay, how do you want to use your timeouts? You've got three remaining. Do you use them now, or do you wait and use them if you get the ball back? Let this one go and call it right after the next one. Okay. He's well, it has gotten just plain nasty outside, but this game is anything but nasty. An outstanding contest for the Division Three State Championship. Still on his feet. That's it. Watlin. And he stays inbounds, first gets the down. first down. The clock stops to reset the chains. That was it. That'll give him enough time to run it out now. Each team, as we said, unbeaten, 12-0. 
One will go home with a loss, the other will go home with a gold trophy, but each team has played a championship caliber game right here. Watlin's a good football player. Another cutback. Gets in the extra yard, it should get the first down. Lund, and looks how, look how he wrapped up the ball with both hands. Now if you're Sturgeon Bay, you gotta burn a timeout. And they do. So that's the first of their three timeouts. 155 remaining. It's been a great game, hasn't it, Ben? Oh. See, I knew there'd be more points being scored. You did, that's right. You <laughs> <laughs> We've just been told that Ashland has set a new Division Three state championship rushing record. 366 yards unofficially, and uh, we can see why. They've got a, a talented stable of running backs between Sean Lund, Sean Watlin, and then Paul Tudor, as well as reserve quarterback Jason Zach, who's done a good job of running the option in the absence of their number one quarterback, Mike Shimlock. They rushed the ball for 4,300 yards before this ball game, so I wonder why they got the rushing record. <laughs> Think about that, Van. They're, they're going against a, an undefeated team, a, a great football team, and they still rush for 366 yards. Watlin. And it'll depend on the spot whether or not he got the first down. You know what I don't like right now about Ashland? They're trying to dive and, uh, and squirm for that extra yardage. And really right now what they need to do is keep two hands on the football. The only thing that can fool, screw them up right now is to, is to have the ball laying on the ground. Kind of surprised as he's short of the first down. Surprised that Sturgeon Bay did not use a timeout there. Because they don't need a first down. They need just to hang on to the football. It's third and inches. And Zach is going to wait till the last second before he takes the center snap. Well-disciplined football team by Ashland. First down, Watlin pushed back, but his forward progress was enough to get the first down to move the chains yet again. Watlin unofficially 185 yards on the ground. That's about his average. That's right. Now the referee signals for the chain gang to move again. And the clock resumes, 1.15 and counting. Well now if you're Sturgeon Bay, you're thinking of one thing, strip. You try to strip the ball carrier of the ball. Steal and run for a touchdown. And if you're Ashland, you say you better make sure you put both hands around that pound of bacon. They're gonna take a knee here. Guess they're not going to take any knee. Lund the ball carrier, and Sturgeon Bay has got to call a timeout. 48 seconds left. They want to attack a few yards on that record. Lund also over the century mark in terms of rushing, 165. At last count, Wallen 185. That has been really the difference in this ball game. Each team with its share of turnovers. It's a shame they couldn't have gotten a few more kids in the ball game right at the end here. The game is still in question, and there always could be a fumble. You wouldn't want to put your second team no. offense in there and then lay the ball on the ground. But uh, it would be nice for these kids to get in the ball game if they could. But just being here, just being here and being part of it is a big uh, accomplishment for all the youngsters on both these teams. Ashland knocking at the door to their second ever state championship. The first, as we said, 
coming in 1984 over Grafton. Sturgeon Bay trying to prevent the inevitable, perhaps. They've got no timeouts remaining, and they take a knee, and we might have one more play. It's third and ten, and I, you got to believe this will be the last play, although if he had stopped, you'd stop. You'd get it stopped long enough just for them to change possession. Because <laughs> they'd have a fourth down. It's third and ten, unless they just opt to not no. punt it. It's over. And that should do it. The seconds wind down and let the celebration begin for the Ore Dockers. They go back to Ashland with the Division Three State Championship, and there you see a very happy Bob McLeod as his ball club remains unbeaten with a hard fought, a well-earned 25 to 20 victory over a valiant team from Sturgeon Bay. Wonderful job by Bob McLeod. He came in four years ago and this program was flat on its back, and he brings it to a state championship in just four years. That's quite an accomplishment. Sturgeon Bay has nothing to be ashamed of. Uh, they played, I think, an outstanding ball, ball game on both sides of football. There you can get an appreciation of what it's like down on the field. Not only is it cold down there, but it is Windy, rainy, and nasty. But you know what? I don't think the York Dockers are feeling a thing right now. It's it's happy and it's also sad. You know, you've got the all the emotions built up in this thing. And, uh, Here's one of the touchdowns by Watland. This seems like this was centuries ago, doesn't it? <laughs> Kid's a good little football player. Make a good small college back for somebody. Here is the long run by Lund, uh, 64 yards, if memory serves me correct. I'll check that. This is earlier, or a little bit later. And Grison doing his best to catch him, but it was a foot race that only Lund would win. Been a long season for these two football teams. Wow. You when know, I mean, you consider you start way back in August, and here it is, uh, the middle of November, not even quite the middle of November. And it, you know what, man, it isn't the trophy in itself. It's it's getting here. It's the process in which they got here. Uh, two classy football teams and kids working hard. You can't, can't ask for anything more. Bob McLeod got the old uh, water jug uh, Shower. I'm sure he needed that. I'm sure he's cold to the bone right now. He, he loves it. Believe me, he loves it. Of the WIAA. Well, that's a heck of a way to uh, celebrate a state Seth championship. Duanis, John Peterson, Chad Hoiska, and Chris Grison of Division Three runner-up Stridgen Bay, please come forward. Here you see the representatives from Sturgeon Bay going up to accept the second place trophy. They came up with a first place effort only to fall short against a spirited team from Ashland. Well said, Ben. They did get a great effort. Boy, if you had player of the game, I'd have to cut that trophy in half and certainly give a half to number 14, Chris Grison of Sturgeon Bay because he played one heck of a football game. I've never seen quarterback scrambling like I saw from that young man. And I and I brought out his name, Fran Tarkenton. And if you can conjure up the visions of number 10, Tarkenton scrambling for the Seren, Vikings and the Giants, three you saw Grayson do Sturgeon the same Bay, thing. Please come forward to receive the runner-up trophy. This is a class fella here. Good teacher, teacher. 
They have good education in that town. Uh, Sturgeon Bay is noted for their high quality education. And uh, he's well respected young, uh, a man in, in, in his community. There's a, a faint smile. A heck of a season. You go home 12 and 1 and, and you fall short. I mean, that's all you can say. And you're disappointed Captain with a 12 and 1 season. Lund and but Mike his, his program's now kind of turned over a little bit. Division 3 state and champions, Ashland. He'll be back here if he working at it. Please come to the awards table and receive the individual medals for your team. <clears throat> here come the ore dockers to accept the championship trophy. And they'll go back at 13 and 0, a baker's dozen, and they and the couldn't have asked for a better the 1993 celebratory three cake. State champions from Ashland High School, Robert McLeod. Second ever state championship at Ashland. The first one coming in 1984. In 1993, they hoist the gold again. I think Bob's too tired to get that thing up there. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> and what few people are remaining in Ashland, they are celebrating right now. And the ones that are here, they'll be hoarse tomorrow. It'll take about a month for him to recover. You know, <laughs> maybe before you start drinking in, and you drink in all of the things, all the accolades and the banquets afterwards. And yeah, it's about a month it'll take before they start to really reflect and, and give thanks for the blessings that they've had to, to be able to be here. So the Dockers remain unbeaten as they hold off Sturgeon Bay to win the Division III championship. The final count, 25-20. For Ken Beagle, I'm Vance Stout. Thank you very much for joining us for the Division III state championship game. The trophy goes to Ashland.
Car's two miles long.
They had goals or varsity assistants. We have eight guys that formed one great staff this year. And that is the reason that we'll stay today. Offensive coordinator, varsity assistant, Clay North.
and often that we are able to recognize people who really have put Ashland on the map. And this year we had a bunch of young men who did that in an outstanding coach. I'd like to ask, ask uh, Coach Val McLeod and his two co-captains to please come forward. I'd like to recognize them with the plaque given to them by the city of Ashland, along with certificates of excellence. For each member of the team, the coaches, and the cheerleaders, last but not least. And I'd like to say a few words just to these two young men. What you've done for four years is something you will remember all of your lives. And more than that, it sets the stage for the rest of your lives. The teamwork you stuck together for four years come easily. And you got it all together. You really did it right. I'm very proud of you. Everybody in town is know that. I have a plaque here that says City of Ashland Awards, Ashland Orange Docker 1993 football team, Medal of Excellence, in honor of 1993 WIA Division State Championship. Outstanding. Congratulations. I'll have certificates of excellence if you would please coach pass on to each member of the team and to each cheerleader and to each of the coaches. Right. And I think speaking for all of you, we're proud. Oh, I just stand up a little bit.